So we're here today to talk about how to organize projects with OneNote. My name is Ann Hag. I am a law practice management advisor here at the Chicago Bar Association. I'm really excited to teach this class because I didn't know anything about OneNote before I got this job. It was not around, or at least it wasn't like a popular tool when I was in school. Um, I wish it had been because I think it would have been <laughs> made my life a lot easier and I think it can make yours a lot easier. So let's dive in. First of all, what is OneNote? It is a powerful note-taking and record-keeping application. Um, it is part of the Microsoft Office suite. It's, it has installed cloud-based and mobile version, so you can really access it on all of your devices. OneNote, so there's a, they're referred to as one and the same, but there are two different tools, technically. Uh, the most recent version of the desktop installed version uh, is OneNote 2016. So that's a part of the Office 2016 suite. If you are working with older versions of the Office suite, you might be running an older version. But when I say OneNote 2016, I'm talking about the one that is like installed on your computer. When I say just OneNote, that's when I'm talking about the more, the, the, the app that is either on your phone or tied in with your Office 365 subscription. We today, you'll see in the demo, we'll look at both of them. They're, especially if you are a 365 user, they're pretty fluid. We, you'll, you'll see what I mean when we jump into it. But um, if you are a 365 user, you're using OneNote. If you are a desktop user, you have OneNote and not just OneNote 2016, and you should probably use OneNote because OneNote 2016 is, it's supported for now, but it's gonna be the, uh, or actually, yeah, 2016 is still supported, but future versions will not be. So OneNote is a better bet. If, if you search your computer and you have two OneNote apps, open the one that's just OneNote, not OneNote 2016. So what isn't OneNote? OneNote is not a practice management software. It is not meant to totally replace that. And it is not a document management software. So you kind of have to tailor your expectations about what we're gonna talk about today. It's a great tool for what it is, but it is not these things. So just keep that in mind. Why is it a good option for lawyers? First of all, all of your notes are date and time stamped, which can be really beneficial. They can contain images, attachments, audio. They can be handwritten. So you, if you have a device with a stylus, you're able to actually integrate your handwritten notes with your typed notes. If you don't have a device with a stylus, we'll talk about that a little bit later, about different things that you can do. Um, your notes become searchable. I think that's probably one of the most beneficial features of OneNote, is that all of a sudden you instead of having just a pile of papers with all of your notes on them, you can now like type in a word, a keyword, and search for things within your notes. So that's really huge. It can be used as a to-do list application. So if you're using one of those already, that's one thing that you can cut out of your array of apps. And it has audio capabilities that help with dictation. It's not as sophisticated as like a full dictation tool, so don't expect it to totally replace that if you're really if you rely heavily on a dictation tool, but it can be an addition to one or a substitute if it's not something that you use very regularly. So I think the biggest hang up for a lot of people when they start to think about using OneNote is that they like they don't like taking notes on their computer. They are hand, they like handwriting, and I, I understand that. I have always felt that I remember things better when I write them down, and there are some, some, there have been studies done to back that up. There was a 2014 Association of Psychological Science study that reported that students who physically took notes received a memory boost, particularly when compared to those who took notes via a laptop. So there's something to it. Um, and so it, it's a comfort issue. Some people are just more comfortable taking notes by hand. One really great alternative to, or kind of a, a workaround, a compromise, I guess, <laughs> so that you can keep using, you can have the perks of digitized notes, but you can still keep your handwritten notes and keep taking notes by hand, um, is a smart notebook. A smart notebook combines the physicality and efficiency of a pen and paper notebook 
with the security, organization, and accessibility of cloud-based technologies. Rocketbook, in particular, is one company that makes a line of mostly reusable, technologically-centric notebooks. I had never heard of these until I started <laughs> researching for this class, and I thought they were really, really cool, like Jetsons kind of cool. <laughs> um, and so I wanted, it, it's a really hard thing to think about um, and I know that the handwriting aspect is important to a lot of people. So I wanted to show you this quick little video on Amazon about the Rocketbook Everlast, just so you can get a sense of like how you can bridge that gap. It's only three minutes long, so just bear with us. For thousands of years, humans have been filling their notebooks and then just buying more. It's like the notebook industry has given up on innovation. Hey, what's this? The notebook Hemingway wrote on? That's cool, I guess. We're from Rocketbook, and we make notebooks from the future. At Rocketbook, we are already famous for inventing the Wave Notebook, the smart notebook that can be erased in the microwave. We've shipped 100,000 waves to satisfied customers around the world. Others may stop there, but we are maniacs obsessed with blending old-fashioned notebooks with future and awesome. So we've spent a year in the Rocket Lab designing a new notebook that feels like pen and paper, but is endlessly reusable and completely integrated with your digital lifestyle. Introducing the Everlast Notebook from Rocketbook. The Everlast brings cloud scalability to pen and paper. Simply write, scan, and erase. Imagine 1,000 of your favorite notebooks in one sleek design that fits in your backpack. Here's how it works. Everlast pages look and feel like paper, but they're actually constructed from a polyester composite rather than wood. You write on the Everlast using any pen from the Pilot Friction line, which are available in store and online. Writing on the Everlast feels perfectly natural and smooth. And as the ink dries, it forms a complete bond to the polyester page, so it won't rub off. But what makes this formulation so unique is that each page can be wiped completely clean with a moist towel, so it can be used over and over and over again. The Everlast Notebook is also compatible with the Rocketbook app. So before you wipe your notes off the page, you can blast them online to your favorite cloud services. In a fraction of a second, Rocketbook Machine Vision scans, enhances, and sends each page to the specific destination they belong on the cloud services you already use. Each Everlast Notebook page has seven symbols. Set up the Rocketbook app to assign each symbol to a location within Dropbox, Google Docs, Evernote, or many other services. You could configure your diamond to send meeting notes directly to your shared team folder in Dropbox. Or students could configure their star symbol to send notes right to a math folder in Google Drive. So you can make your list, break out that diagram, or color in that drawing. Then tomorrow, start your day with a brand new notebook. With the Everlast, one notebook becomes 1,000 notebooks. The utility of the cloud and the joy of pen and paper. That's Rocketbook. All right, so I know that's kind of a tangent. We're here today to talk about OneNote, but I do think it's really cool. And it, as you saw, you can just take your notes by hand, take a picture of it, and it sends it directly to OneNote so that you can integrate with all of your other uh, digital notes. So it's a really cool tool that I, I felt was worth mentioning. All right, so let's jump back into my PowerPoint real quick. All right, so a couple use case scenarios for lawyers, just so that you can get a sense of how OneNote can be really useful for you. Uh, you can audio record a deposition and take handwritten, handwritten notes that correspond with timestamps. You can share team notebooks. So if you, if you have a shared team notebook that everyone in your team has access to, if you're in a deposition with a member of that team, you can kind of pass digital notes back and forth. Because if you like make a note in your notebook and the other person can see it, you can, it's a really subtle way of communicating. Uh, it can replace trial binders. There are annotation tools for document collaboration and you can create trial outlines. So like if you're examining a witness, you can have the questions that you wanna ask paired with the 
exhibits that you want to use so that all of your information is in one place. It just consolidates it a little bit better. All right. So I wanted to point out the structure in OneNote because I think that can be a little bit confusing for people. It's essentially a digital three ring binder, if you think about it that way. <laughs> um, you have your notebook is the binder, and then your tabs are just like a normal tab would be in a binder. So it's like a section. And then those tabs are made up of pages, and then you can add sub pages just to add to that structure. And you can also create um, section groups so that you can like group tabs together. So the, you can just use this as a resource because it, the terminology can get a little bit confusing. All right, so let's actually jump into OneNote and start looking at things in a little bit more detail. All right, so there are two ways to access OneNote. The first is through 365, which you just log into your account. If you have 365, you've done this before. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and log in really quickly. And it takes you, oh, okay. It's a new one. All right, so it takes you to your homepage and you just click on the OneNote app. And so now the app version of OneNote opens, slowly but surely. The internet has been really slow down here lately, I apologize. Okay, so now you can see all of the different notebooks that you have. This is the one that I have set up to demo with today, so I'm just gonna click on it and open. And so the app version, the mobile version, which is what we're looking at right now, that has pretty solid functionality. You might run into cases where it can't do everything that you want it to do if you have like a hyper-specific task that you're looking at. So if you run into that, all you have to do is hit this button right here that says open in OneNote. And that will open the fully installed version on your computer. So because that has everything, and if you have the app, you have access to the installed version, I'm gonna go ahead and just open the fully installed version to demo with today. They're very comparable. They look almost exactly the same. So to do that on my computer, I'm just typing into the search bar OneNote, and it pops right up. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. So yeah, as you can see, they look almost exactly the same. It's just that one is in a web browser. All right, so here you can see all my notebooks. And these are all of the different sections that I have. This is just a demo. These are some things that I thought could be useful. Um, but you can add or remove them as you see fit. The, my to-do list section is open right now, and the only page that I have, which you can see right here, is the sample to-do list. Same with research notes, projects, and then this estate planning mock-up, and then meetings. Here in the meetings tab, you can see that I have a section group. So all you have to do to add these different things, if you wanna add a section, you go down to the bottom of that column and hit the plus sign section. And the new one pops up. And I'm just gonna name it demo section and hit enter. If you, you can change the colors as you see fit. You just have to right click and you can either delete, rename, move or copy. And then here where it says section color, you can just change it to whatever you want. I, I'm picky about color, so that's a feature that I like. <laughs> um, and then if you wanna add a page within that section, when you have the demo section open, you just go down to the page column and hit plus page. And so now you've got two different pages. If you want to add a sub page, or if you, if you add a page that you then wanna make a sub page, you just hit make sub page. And so that really just depends on how, I can see some people like wanting nothing to do with sub pages. It just depends on how you think and how you like to organize things you really have creative control over it. How did you add the, mm -hmm. you add the um, sub, like on your meeting to 2018 or 2019? Right. How do you add the sub, those aren't pages, are they? 
Uh, no. Okay. So, so there yeah, they, they're called section groups. Um, just for our webcast viewers, the question in the room had to do with how do you create these little sub tabs? Um, that, so that, that just means that you're creating a new section group. And so if you go down into the, if you want to create a new one, you go down to the blank space below it and right click and hit new section group. And then I'm just going to name it demo section group and hit enter. And then if I want to add tabs underneath it, I just click on it and then hit add section and it'll know to add it underneath it. All right, um, let's see. So that covers the layout basics. Um, so then once you have a page open, you just click on any, you can click anywhere on the page. It's not like a Word document. You do, you're not restricted to like formatting. <laughs> uh, you can start typing wherever you want. You can format with headings, just like in Word, but it's, it's less structured, less formal. Um, it's meant to be a note-taking thing. So um, here you can see that I have started to create a to-do list. I think that this can be a really great function um, because I, we all use to-do lists. <laughs> uh, so to do that, I'm going to jump into this estate planning mock-up that I have created. Um, so here you can see that I have these four different tasks that I want to make to do tasks. So I want to add that little checkbox next to it. I'm going to highlight the first one. And then, let's see. Nope. Uh, there we go. It's under tags. So one with that item highlighted, I'm going to hit tags and then to do. And then it throws that little checkbox next to it. If I've done it, all I have to do is check, check the checkbox. Click on the checkbox. Um, and so you have to do that for each one. You can do it all at the same time, I believe. Let's make sure that works. Yep. And so it knows to add them individually. Then if you are, if you want to add another item immediately underneath it and you don't want to have to like tag it individually each time, if you put your cursor at the end of the last task and hit enter, then it'll automatically create a checkbox for you. Um, so yeah, that, that can be really great. You can also tag different tasks as urgent if you want. Mm -hmm. Can you subtasks? Um, so the question in the room was, can you make subtasks? Um, yes. So all you have to do if you want to create a subtask is hit enter after the previous task and then hit tab. So it's, it's similar to bullets in Word. Um, and then it automatically indents for you. So while we're on the topic of tags, I want to show a couple other ones that you can do. The benefit of adding tags to different items in your uh, notebook is that you can then search them. So what here you can see I have what's going to be a contact and then a phone number. So if I tag it as a contact and then as a phone number, later on I'll show you how you can search for it. So to tag something, again, all you have to do is highlight it, then go up to tags, and find whichever one fits. Um, um, so there should be, let's, we, there, there should be a pre-populated, there it is. Um, so I don't know why it's not appearing now. It did at my computer earlier. Um, but if you click on tags, there should be a tag that pops up Right now you just see to do, important, critical, and question. There should be one that says contact and there should be one that says phone number. But this is kind of good because you can see if for some reason those don't pop up for you, all you have to do is hit create new tag and then it takes you and it shows you a, a larger group of tags that you can choose from. This one with the little, it's like the shape, the outline of a person and then three lines next to it, that's the contact tag. And so you can see the one next to it, this envelope is probably going to be an email address, and then the phone is going to be a phone number. Um, I'm not sure why that's not showing up all of a sudden, but I'm just going to go ahead and click the contact one. And it's making me name it for some reason. <laughs> Maybe. Contact and hit create. All right, and while we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and create the phone. 
um, because that's what I was going to do next anyways. And I'm going to hit create. And then I'm going to X out of this and try and tag it again. So the, the contact is still highlighted. I'm going to hit tags and then contact. And then I'm going to highlight the phone number and then highlight or hit the phone tag. Yeah, I mean, you could also just, you could treat it as one and just tag it as a contact. It, it's just whatever works best for you. But now I'm going to click on a different section and I'm going to go to this little magnifying glass. That's the search function. And so I'm going to search phone. And so that, the, the results immediately show that phone number tagged that I, or that I just tagged, sorry. Um, and so that pops right up. So that's pretty cool. If you um, want to just add a contact into your list or into your notes and you have like pages of notes and you don't want to have to search around for it for a long time. Tags can be a really great way to circumvent that. You could also search to do tags. If you want to see one master list of everything that you have to do. Um, you could also search you could tag something if you like have a to-do item that you want to tag as urgent or critical. You just highlight it and go to tags and then critical or important, whichever works best for you. And so then it puts that little exclamation point next to it. And then if you search critical, all of your critical items will show up. So it's a really great way to utilize that search. That is also the search that you would use if you're looking for a name or it doesn't have to be just tagged items. So if you're looking for, um, it, it's like control F on the internet or something, <laughs> like searching a document really easily, which is a huge perk of OneNote. One feature that I think is pretty cool is if you click on the view tab in the ribbon. So in, in all Microsoft products, this little area appears called the ribbon. The ribbon for OneNote is a little bit more streamlined than it is for like Microsoft Word or Excel, but it's still the ribbon. And so I'm going to click on the View tab. If you like to, especially if maybe you're taking notes with a stylus, if you're used to like either loose leaf ruled lines or graph paper, that's how you prefer to write, you can do that. You don't have to work with this blank sheet of paper. You just hit rule lines and then pick whichever one you want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just do this. So now it kind of adds some structure to it. You can make sure that you're typing within a certain area. It, it, it just helps organize based on what you usually do. It, it's really set up to actually mimic a paper copy. To reiterate, I have these instructions all written out for you step by step how to do the things that we're going to talk about in the materials which are available for you to download. With OneNote, you have the ability to add anything to these notebooks. So you can add photos. If you go to the Insert tab, that gives you a really concise sense of how much you can add to it. You can add a table. If you want to insert a table within your notes, you can add any kind of file. That's file. This button right here, the File button, really kind of is an umbrella under which a lot of these could function. <laughs> Um, like PDF could be in there or pictures. Um, you can insert, so if you, if you have like scanned some notes that you've taken, like handwritten notes, maybe you didn't have access to a computer, uh, you can just scan them as a PDF and insert them right in your notebook. You can insert online video, you can insert links. If you, you have to actually go through the process to link up your OneNote with your Outlook account, which if you click on meeting details, it'll there's a setup wizard that'll walk you through it. You just have to sign in. Uh, we're not gonna actually do it right now though. Um, but it's a really streamlined way of like, if you have a meeting in your Outlook calendar and then you wanna actually take notes for that meeting, it consolidates everything. It, it auto-populates all that information, like who else is attending, what time it is, where it's taking place. If you have it in Outlook, it will then allow you to transfer that really seamlessly to your notebook. I want to show you how to record audio because I think that's a really useful tool. Um, so I'm going to go into this blank section just to keep things streamlined. Um, 
so now I'm on a totally blank page. I'm going to go ahead. Th this up here is your title. I'm going to go ahead and name it um, Audio Demo <laughs> Creative. Um, and so to insert audio, you just go up here and it, it just be aware it starts recording immediately <laughs> as soon as you press the button. There's no like um, secondary <laughs> activation. So I'm going to go ahead and click audio. And now you can see it's recording everything I'm saying. As long you, you should test to make sure that your microphone is working first on your computer because that can be a snag that you'll run into. Um, but all right, we have a 12 second clip. I'm going to go ahead and click stop now. And so now you can see that it has created this file and it, it just inserted wherever my cursor was in the document. So if I had been taking notes beforehand or if I want to go back and add notes, I can just drag and drop this down a little bit. And I can say, this is the audio from the February 5th meeting. And then make sure that file's right underneath it so it's all coherent and makes sense. It's also time stamped so that that information is there in the future. And then if you want to listen to it, you just double click it. And now you can see it's recording everything. So there I am. <laughs> uh, and so to stop it, you just hit pause up here. You can also jump around. You can go back five minutes, back 15 seconds, or forward 15 seconds, or forward five minutes. That's a large gap. I'm not sure <laughs> why they chose those numbers. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really useful thing. You can also, we'll go, so th that audio tab automatically pops up once you hit the audio button on the insert tab. So I'm just going to jump back to the insert tab real quick. Real quick. Um, I wanted to show you this researcher option. I think this could be really great for attorneys. If you hit the researcher button in the insert tab, this window pops up. And it's essentially like, I, th I think when you open it the first time, it actually says that it integrates with Bing. Oh, there it is. It says powered by Bing, which is the, uh, it's like the alternative to Google that Microsoft pairs with. If you use Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer, that's going to be your automatic uh, search engine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, research, let's say, um, Supreme Court case. This is uh, just the first one that pops in my head, <laughs> uh, Roe v. Wade, and I'm going to hit Enter. And so if you're doing some research and you want to pull this into your notes, all you have to do, you search it, and so there's this topic that comes up, or you it pulls up these journal articles. It tells you whether it's just a website or just a or an actual journal article, and it tells you where the journal's from. If you want to add that into your notes, you just hit this little gray plus sign, and then it's there, and it has a link. So it's a it's a great great way of doing research. The only limitation is that Bing factor. Some people really don't like Bing. Um, you can always, if you are researching on your own, you can always just insert a hyperlink. Um, but this is an integrated way of doing that that's pretty cool. Um, you can also use stickers. I don't really, <laughs> I don't know, that might be some people's speed, <laughs> uh, especially maybe if you're like sending something to an assistant or a coworker and you want to be a little more congenial, <laughs> uh, that can be a fun way to add some levity. Um, symbols, like euros, copyright symbols, that's all there. Uh, the math feature is kind of cool. I don't know how, <laughs> how, how many attorneys would use this. I don't know. I'm not a numbers person. But um, you can have OneNote solve equations for you. So I'm going to say, uh, what was it? Again, not a numbers person. <laughs> Let me find the one that I came up with in my notes. Um, all right, I'm going to say 5x plus 3 equals, I don't know why it does that, uh, equals 18. And so then I'm going to highlight it and hit math. And then you have to tell it what to do. So here we want to solve for x. And so that's going to be in the drop down menu. You can hit solve for x, and it does it. I'm very glad I didn't have OneNote readily available to me when I was in high school because I would have never done my homework. <laughs> I would have had OneNote do it for me.
Um, so yeah, that, that, it's a cool, cool functionality. It, just, it shows you how powerful this is, I think. If you, so let's actually insert a photo and show you what that looks like. Um, and we'll insert a handwritten note as well. Um, so let's jump to a fresh page. Um, photo demo. So here I want to add in this photo that I have taken. All, you can go through the insert pictures tab. This can also, if you, you can like take a picture through your camera or you can find something online or from a file. I already have this file on my desktop. I know that's what I want to insert. I can just drag and drop it from my desktop right into OneNote and there it appears. Um, same idea, you can drag and drop it wherever you want on the page. You can add text underneath it or beforehand. Um, if you want to see, so sometimes the, I haven't been, I haven't noticed a ton of consistency to it about the timestamps, what shows up when. Um, if you want to see a timestamp and it's not automatically displaying, you should just be able to right click on something and, um, man, this computer does not like me right now. <laughs> Uh, everything that worked so seamlessly before is now having an issue. Um, let's find somewhere else. If you, so here you can see, I don't know why it's not working with the photo, um, but if you click on this text, if you right click on it, anywhere on it, you can see that Anne Hag added it at 2.09 p.m. on February 5th. So if you are working with somebody else, if, if it's a collaborative notebook, you can see who added different things. If you if something comes out of left field and you want to track down whoever did it, you can do that. You can also so let's look at adding handwritten notes. So you have a handwritten note that you want to scan in and add to your notebook. Um, here is a, a scan that I took up at my desk. So again, I'm just going to drag and drop it. Though I could go to insert PDF or file, but I'm just going to drag and drop it for now. And so now you get this option to either insert it as a file, which is, that's what's going to look like what we've been doing so far with the audio file, where it doesn't actually display the file, it just shows you that a file is there. I'm going to go ahead and insert it as a printout, though, because that is when you can actually see the note that I've written. So this is an example of a note that you hand wrote. <laughs> um, so it, it's a really great way to consolidate everything under one umbrella. The downside of this method is that you, if you have scanned something in, that text isn't going to register as searchable text that is in the PDF, if that makes sense. So that's not something, like if I searched uh, OneNote notebook, this note wouldn't pop up as a search result because it's recognizing it as an image and not as text. Um, to work around that a little bit, that's I haven't found a solution to taking a scan of text and having it register as text within OneNote. But if you are taking notes by hand, so let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, again, I'm just going to a fresh tab here. I'm going to go to the Draw tab in the ribbon. And now you can see all these different options. I've got highlighters, pencils, markers. Uh, eraser, all you could want. Um, shapes, what I'm going to do. So taking notes with a mouse by hand <laughs> is miserable. I don't know why you would want to do that. That's my only option right now because I don't have a stylus. This, is, this feature is geared towards stylus users. Um, so if, if you do not have a Surface or a tablet or anything that will work with a stylus, this probably isn't going to be hugely beneficial to you. But since there are a ton of Surface users out there, I want to go over it anyways. Um, I, the highlighter text might be a little bit different. So if you have like, um, if you have text that you've typed out that you want to highlight, you can probably get away with doing that without. It's going to be. It, it's not going to be a super straight line. But <laughs> if you don't have a stylus, it, you can still get by. Um, so let's draw some text. <laughs> so again, it's going to be messy since I don't have a stylus. 
so what I want to do is I want to take this cat scratch <laughs> and turn it into text. So the way that you do that is there's this little lasso function right here. It has like a dashed circular shape with a green plus sign. I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to draw a little lasso around the text that I've drawn. And then this button appears up here that says ink to text. I'm going to hit that, and it changes it to text. And so now it goes from being something that I have written out by hand to something that is not only a little bit more organized, because it looks like text and not my handwriting, um, it's going to take it from that to then something that is searchable also. So it's indexed, and you'll be able to actually search your notes for it. This can, this would also be really great. I, <laughs> I worked as a paralegal. Um, it can be really hard to decipher people's handwriting <laughs> sometimes. So this could be a nice workaround for that. If somebody takes like handwritten notes with a stylus or on one of the smart, the smart, sorry, <laughs> smart notebooks that we looked at, um, they can then convert that to text so that you don't have to add in that extra layer of work with deciphering. Um, you can also do ink to shape. So if you just drew out a shape, it's the same, same exact concept, but not with text. Um, you can add in different shapes. If you are working with the pens and you decide that you actually want to type something out, all you have to do is click this button that has, it, it's the little mouse and then a cursor and the letter A. All you have to do is click that and then you'll be able to drop text in again. So it's easy to go back and forth. And you can always undo something just by hitting the undo button. So one thing that I wanted to point out was that you, I think OneNote used to have a video recording function. I, it doesn't seem to, I haven't been able to find it anywhere. I think the new, like the 2016 and on versions don't have it. I'm not sure why they would have decided to do away with that, but it's nowhere to be found. If you want to take a video of something and insert it into your notes though, you can still do that. You just have to take the video elsewhere, like either with a camera and anywhere that creates a file. And then you can just drop the file in. So it, it doesn't have to be all through OneNote. One thing that I also wanted to point out was if you have an audio file that is of something really important, like a deposition, it's probably worth, if you took that audio with OneNote, it's probably worth saving it elsewhere also. Um, it's, with anything important, it's always good to have it in at least two places. <laughs> so to do that, all you would have to do is right click it and hit copy and then paste it right onto your desktop. And then you can save it wherever you want. So that, that audio exists in two places. You're not totally relying on OneNote because you never, you never know. <laughs> uh, two options is always better than one. We had a question in the room. Um, how would you do screen clipping, like trying to copy something from a website you see into OneNote? Okay, um, so the question from the room had to do with how do you take like a screen clip or a screenshot and insert it into your note? It's interesting that you point that out because I didn't, it didn't occur to me. Um, Almost every Microsoft Office product has a built-in screen clipping tool. OneNote doesn't, unless it's really hidden somewhere. I didn't see it anywhere. <laughs> um, so maybe it, it might be hidden in there somewhere. But if you, if you can't find it, it doesn't matter. Because all that you have to do, like if you are online, you can use anything that you ordinarily would to take a screenshot So you, on a Mac. I'm, I'm a Mac user, and so I'm kind of a fish out of water on these. Um, but I, it's always just Command Shift Four, and then it like saves the. You, you can like take a picture of whatever you want, and it pops it out onto your desktop. You would just have to like dra drag and drop that into your notes. So it, it would just function as inserting a file. All right. Any other questions from in the room? No, okay, I don't see any other questions from online. Yeah, I am always available as a resource. Let me, I think I forgot to add my email in here. Let me throw it up really quickly. Um, 
And if you had issues with the screen sharing, I apologize. Um, if it's urgent or if it's something that you really need, you feel free to reach out to me and I will do my best to send it to you as quickly as possible. The recording, my email is right here on the screen. If you have any questions later on down the road, if you're using OneNote and confused about something, please feel free to reach out. I, again, really like this tool. I think it could do a lot and it can really help people get organized, which is a big thing for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much.